So good afternoon everyone. I hope everyone has wonderful winter break. So we start the semester with assemblies and material module. So today I introduce the general class content and discuss about the brick banner. We already discussed the issue from the architecture 345 and 545. However, today the we more discuss about advanced technology about the brick banner. So today the we more talk about the brick assemblage and what do you consider when, when you assemble the brick banner over the structure. Okay. So what do you learn in the module one? So what do you expect to learn in this module? I start from the this project. This project is Eight Octavia Gateway. It is multi-family house in San Francisco, which I working in the St. Stanley Setuj office. It was rendering image for client meeting. How do we develop this rendering image to realize construction building? And then what do we need to prepare for the construction? We have to understand the material palette and basic, the basic drawing such as plan, section, elevation, assembly detail, and the code analysis. We have to be discuss how we can realize this building in the real world from the image to the actual space. So what did you find this drawing set? It is only one page. We draw 300 pages document set for the construction. It is just for the architecture part. We also consider to add MEP, structure, landscape, and also consider about the historical environment review set and more and more. To realize the, this building, to realize the image to the actual building, we should consider lots of different consideration. We have to be considered about the code, regulation, zoning, and detail, and the accessibility. Every single thing we have to be considered to realize this building. So when you just find out this drawing set here, so you can just find out how the louver, you can see the louver here, how louver, the connect to window, and how window, the connect the slab, and how we cover the, this concrete edge, and how we waterproofing the, this window. So this is a single example. However, we should understand various aspects to realize your rendering image to the actual space. So you can see the time-lapse video, how this building start construction from the beginning to the end. So let's watch the, this, the time-lapse video together.
It completed 2014. The two build or construct building architect have to collaborate with various fields. To collaborate other fields, architect have to know about architectural system. It doesn't mean you do not you do not need to be the structural engineer or MEP engineer. However, you have to know the sense of the building system because you are the communicator between the client and the contractor and engineer. It means you have to know about their language, how you communicate with them, and how you deliver the, their other field's language to the other part. It means we have, we have to know about their language. We have to know about the overall architecture process. In this reason, we have to be learn the site tag. The studio also covered the design, but you have to be understanding about this technological term and technological knowledge to communicate with the other part to make your project successfully. So that's why you have to be know you're making out a beautiful rendering image, you can making out the beautiful design from the Rhino, but this is more about the design aspect. It is very important, but also you have to be know how you realize this beautiful rendering image to the real world. This is more about the technological part. This is more about the practical part. You have to be understanding about the both language, which is design language and technological rendering image. Uh, sorry, technological the language, the design language and technical language to making out the building project in the real world. So please, so that's why I'm very focusing on the practical part from the technology side tech classes. But of course, studio, I'm more focusing on the design part. Okay, so we are architect. It is not just beautiful rendering provider. We have to design problem resolver. Okay, we also have to be deliver each other's part, the language, the properly. So let's talk about the schedule today. Um, you can see the week one. Uh, we discuss about the masonry and accessibility. And week two, the, we talk about the another masonry, but that time we know more talk about the stone material. And we start to discuss about the building envelope. We start to talk about what is the vapor barrier means and how we understanding about the insulation and how you adapt this the layer to the, your building envelope. And the week three, we have to be discussed about the roof system, how you design roof, and then how we also learning about the proper slope for the roof, and then how you design the green roof. And the next class, we talk about another building envelope. That time, we start to learning about the grazing, which is there are several different grazing types. We just discussed about the, the different grazing material. And week four, we need to discuss about the metal material. And the last class, of the, this module, we need to discuss about the stair and lamp. The stair lamp is more relating to the code. The, we discuss about the more design part from the, the 445 class, but this semester I'm more to covering about the, some the basic code, the requirement for designing the stair and lamp. And the last day of the, this class, we will have the module keys. Okay, so this is a general the schedule for the module one. So we have a four and a half weeks because the COVID-19, we don't have a spring break. And then we have a one week short, the comparing to the regular the semester. So that's why this is a more compact the lecture and then compact schedule. So, but I think we try the best to understanding about each content. Please let me know if you have any question. I'm very open to meet everyone in the studio or lab, room, or this, the Zoom meeting. So any method I can meet with you. So please let me know if you have any question. And then if you have any question related to the studio, I, I'm happy to talk with you guys, okay? And next one, we have uh, the attendance part. It is very similar as the last semester. So I, you guys probably remember I giving the some extra point for the, your attendance. So attendance is part of your the module grading. So now we discuss about the our first topic, the brick. 
So we already discussed about the brick from the last semester. Um, today we more to discuss about the more the advanced part. The before I introducing about the today's topic, I review the actual what is the brick is we discussed from the last semester. So as you know, the brick is the you can find that brick everywhere. You can just find that this lead brick building around the campus. It is very typical assembly. It used more than 10,000 years with the same size and the same placement. But these days, contemporary architecture and architect the consider about the how they can use this brick differently because the brick is the more modular the material. It means easy to manipulate elevation. So you remember of the building here, this brick weave house from the studio gang. So she just tried to provide this filtration, the layer between the public and the private through the this the perforated brick. It is available to making the this medium zone because brick is the modular, the material. It means it is available to making out this perforated elevation. This perforated elevation part, it is still the getting the lighting into that, and then still the provide guaranteed the view from the inside but it is protected from the outside. So this is a kind of another the method to using the brick differently. So next building, I loved this building. So this is one of my favorite brick building. Um, it is the Cantana Film and Animation Institution in Thailand, designed by Busarman Prithama, and this is a Bangkok project studio work. It is Film and Animation Institute. Um, this project received the international the brick award several years ago. You can see the building itself. It is the weave, and then interestingly, you can see the last of a different opening, and then the brick actually the floating over the this concrete slab here. So we talk about why this brick building the floating over the ground. You can see the in the detail. You can see that this mod, the undulating elevation, the provide more visual accent. It means also articulating that this huge monolithic wall. If you're making a one single solid wall, it looks too monument compared to the human scale. That's why architect more concerned about the human scale to making out this undulating elevation. Also, this brick is great to matching the nature and the, the this also concrete the 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 paving and also you can see the this courtyard you can see the paving and the labor rock just the combined together to make you know, this courtyard this is a very well to matching with the undulating brick elevation also you can just find out the brick here the brick elevation the this floating over the ground level we, through the, this concrete slab. So when you see the section, you can see the more detail. This is a concrete slab. And then you can see the brick, undulating brick here. The undulating brick is the floating over the this concrete slab. And also you can find out that this one is the brick banner system. This is not the load bearing wall. It is empty inside, right? So there, there is the one structure, the metal structure column, and then they making the, this undulating elevation through the brick banner system. And then they just making the this void inside. Why they making the, this void system, and why they floating the this the undulating elevation over the ground? Because about the their the temperature is Bangkok, is Thailand, is very humid area and very hot and humid. So that's why architect consider how they provide the cool and dry natural ventilation from the outside to the inside. If they don't considering about they keep getting the this humid and hot air from the outside. The from the this region, they actually making the venting system, the bottom, and air actually flowing from the bottom, and then this air passing through the this dark space and the getting out of the air from the dislocation here. It means this dark and shade area, the keep air, the cooling down and the dried. So that's why this hot and humid air, 
is keep providing the fresh air through the these the undulating elevation system. It is available the because of the this banner system, the actually core is totally empty. It is available also because the this brick banner system, the floating over the this concrete slab. It means this hot and humid air keep providing the fresh air through the this the void the brick banner system. So let's watch the this the project video together. I hope everyone just get feeling about the, this special quality. Okay? And then so we talk about the basic the brick materiality. The brick here is not just about the decoration, it is about uh, structure construction. I think it's very important. Very simple, but very beautiful. It's the first time you directly know. It's good. Brick wave structure holes in the walls. At first glance, it's not quite clear whether this is a building or a monument. But as soon as one penetrates the interior of this maze of pathways, the mystery is revealed. The Cantana Institute, located about 45 kilometers west of Bangkok, is a school campus where everything revolves around film and film animation. The Thai architect Boonsam Bremtada has created a building full of rhythm and movement, one with walls that dance up to 8 meters into the air. I designed the atmosphere. The atmosphere is uh, that I call the atmospheric architecture. In fact, it, and, uh, the Gandana is it not. It is, is and is not architecture. But I designed and uh, the wind. I designed the light. I designed and the shadow. I designed and the sound. I designed and the smell. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that is, I designed the feeling. It is not architecture. The atmosphere is the loud and beautiful. Architecture and nature combine to create one single entity at the Cantana Film and Animation Institute. About 600,000 fire bricks have been installed here. On some of the bricks, the hand and footprints of their creators are still visible. The undulating form of the walls not only brings a dynamism to the structure, it also creates a dramatic play of light and shadow. An interior steel construction provides the necessary stability, supporting the brickwork every 60 centimeters. But above all, the hollow walls serve as a reverse chimney. As the air contained within them cools, it sinks to the ground, thus providing the entire campus with temperate, fresh air. Over and over one finds hidden spaces, window niches looking out onto nature, and spots for personal retreat. The individual areas of the building are divided into administration, library, lecture hall and editing studio. Light and dark, study and contemplation, interior and exterior, technology and nature flow together seamlessly. After the crisis economic in Thailand, mm -hmm. about the, uh, 15 years ago, and uh, that is very, very big crisis. And, uh, our country is broken, but it, and uh, because of and uh, we we use and uh, material that is not come from the knowledge and everything is uh, imported from the outside. I think and uh, the big is and the common material that is it's everyday material for and uh, the people in Thailand you know about it. You know, and light and the people in the world, you know about it. That is the basic construction of the people that we very familiar. All of the bricks were created by hand and foot. The material comes from the environment. The lack of a mechanized production process means that each brick is unique.
After drying, the handmade clay bricks are carefully sized in the kiln. Then on to the next step of the process, the firing. An entire village is engaged in the completion of the brick in order to carry on the long-established tradition of manual brick production. I don't want this, this village it, it up here mm -hmm. because of and, uh, our generation mm -hmm. that make it, it, it up here. So and, uh, I think and, uh, that is and, uh, one of the responsibility, one of the responsibility of and, uh, the a nice side effect to all of the structural efforts, the finished building cuts a good figure as a backdrop for the school's own purposes. This is the way that, that is, I think we can preserve it and uh, the big community. You will see that with uh, 600,000 that we make in the, the, the Cantana. So let's review the from the 345 and 545 very quickly. So where to begin? So today we need to review about the brick typology. We discuss about the brick color and size and style and texture and bonding type and the mortar color. So we already discussed. So that's why very quickly to review about this part. So let's talk about the brick color. Um, so we already discussed about the, the brick is available lots of different color depending on your project. We mostly know about the red brick, right? This is mostly we use the red brick around us. However, depending on your the project scheme and project purpose, you can decide any color for your design. The brick color range. You remember what is the difference between the tight range and the wide range, right? So we already discussed about what is tight range. It is limited color variation between the module. When you want to make a more monolithic looking the brick elevation, you can choose the very similar color tone between the module to making the similar tone to making out your wall. But if you want to making out the more the extensive color variation between the module, you might consider about the wider range. You want to make the more the modularity and you want to make the articulation or elevation. You might consider about the wider range. Depending on the, your the design scheme, you might consider to use between the tight range and wide range. Next one, we talk about the brick size. The different manufacturer making a different option, but most typical the brick size, you can see the modular brick size here. But however, nowadays, also Ambassador and Nor Norwegian and Monarch is more about the horizontally longer the brick module is also very popular because after Columba Museum, you remember about the some front page, it is Columba Museum. The Peter Junter using the this white the brick. So after that, many architects the try to use this white brick for the, their design. It's very trendy to using the white brick for the project. Next one we talk about the brick texture. The brick surface texture is important to decide overall appearance. The brick can be dramatically changed by texture. It has the various texture option available. You can see the vertical texture and smooth texture, the bark texture, love texture, the log texture, and fleshless texture. You remember how we can make you know, this darker brick. So depending on the temp higher temperature, on or longer firing time, you can get in the, this darker brick tone. Also, we talk about the brick facing terminology. So we already discussed about the, this part, but I think that part for this semester, I ask you to memorize it. I ask you to the, memorize this part 
and ask you to this the terminology in the module keys because when you discuss about uh, your brick facing with the contractor it is very hard to describe it is much better to communicate with uh, the proper the terminology so you can just kind of review one more time this facing we can call the stretcher this facing we can call header this facing we can call low rock this facing we can call soldier this facing we can call the sailor this facing we can call the low rock stretcher so please memorize the this terminology to using the proper terminology with your when you communicate with the contractors so next one is coursing what is about the coursing coursing is a law of one alignment means the per brick assembly coursing is continuous layer the designer can mix these six different types of coding as the Europe has the design so it means you have a different facing this is a one single coursing so it means this is a stretcher facing so it means we can call it stretcher coursing and then this is a header and then this is a continuous line we can call it the header coursing and then this one you can call the soldier you can see the soldier facing and then it is called as the soldier the coursing okay and also lots of different mortar colors available um you have to be matching with the brick color if you wanna provide more monolithic the brick elevation you can choose in the similar color tone with your brick so it means you can just get in the more the the monolithic looking the brick elevation but if you want to give in the more the modularity of the, your brick you can choose in the contrasting the mod the mortar color from the your brick color so to emphasize each module okay so it means depending on the, your the, the elevation scheme you can choose in the proper the mortar color matching with your the brick color so now we just kind of discuss about the very basic the brick the design consideration and material consideration so when you mix the different combination you can get in the unique the brick elevation design okay so means you can just if you want to get in a more unique the brick design so you can actually can mix the different possibility through the this different the consideration to get into your own the unique the brick design okay so now we talk about the mixing option so you can mix the different brick coursing and size on your elevation and facade it expect to create shadow line and emphasize datum line here so when you see the these the library building it looks like a very simple brick building however it has lots of a different consideration you see the brick coursing here then this is a brick coursing between they have some data line here how they making this shadow line and data line because they're using the the little bit setting back from the actual facing to provide the shadow line it means you can just provide this data line here so you can see the first layer they're using the soldier's tech okay this is a soldier's tech coursing and then this is a learning side and then this is a stranger's tech and then learning so this learning side always provide the data line here okay so you can see the this shadow line on the left the facade image you will get in the various the facade designed by different combination of brick coursing and sides here you can just more to see the elevation and section here so you can actually match the elevation this one is a little bit pushing back to provide the data line and also provide their different the facing and coursing and different brick size to making out the brick elevation more dynamic way you can see the another project this is a uh, the Tongxian gate house in Beijing designed by NADAA now they're attorney so you can see the extrusion brick stacking using the multiple brick size and coursing it create shadow from the extrusion brick so you can think about the different type this is a typical brick assemblage and this is a different stacking extrusion it making a more volumetric elevation when you're choosing the this the extrusion and pushing back kind of a stack different stacking method 
So they're using the, the brick header and then they just can use different stacking per each module to make you know, this undulating elevation. Also, it provides lots of interesting shadow line. It means you can actually get a more volumetric elevation design. Now we discuss about the lintel. What is about the lintel? So I just prove the bring the these two the historical building. One is the Stonehenge, and the one is the very classic the building here. Um, you can see the opening, and then there's a two the stone color, and then this one is kind of a horizontal structure here. So when you're actually making out the, this opening. And then still you having the load bearing over the, the opening, how you support the load from the opening. The stone edge doesn't matter, but if you're having the huge stone here, how you support this huge stone over the opening. In this case, we need lintel. So what is lintel? It can be used for structure purpose or ornament purpose. Per structure uses, Lintel is mostly locating over the opening, such as door and window. It is horizontal support of timber, stone, concrete, or steel across the top of a building opening. The historical building uses the heavy monolithic lintel because that time only this heavy thing can support the weight over the opening. What is about the contemporary building? Do you think? We are still using this huge monolithic lintel over the opening for our building, but we have to be more concerned about efficient way. So therefore, we can just consider about the different materiality to making out this lintel over the opening. Nowadays, we used the this metal lintel rather than just using a huge the monolithic lintel. This lintel, the metal lintel, this support the weight over the opening. So the first option here, the single leaf steel lintel. This is a single leaf lintel. And next option, you can considering about double leaf steel lintel. So this is a similar the, the works as the, the single leaf, but depending on the brick layering, single leaf mostly the one layer of the brick. But double leaf, you can just consider about the double layer, which is the outer layer, inner layer, supported by the, this double leaf steel lintel. Next one, you can also consider about the HSS beam lintel. This is another lintel option. You can use in the HSS beam lintel. You can see the section here. This is a HSS beam here, the lead beam, you can see. And then you can see the hanger, this metal hanger. And then this, the beam supposed to be holding the, the weight over the opening. Also, it is holding the, this brick design here. This brick is prefabricated and then this is already installed by the, this hanger. So it means in the construction field, it is very easy to assemble the, this brick banner to the this HSS lintel. So means this is simply click over the hanger and then it is easy to holding from the lintel. And this lintel also works as a structure over the opening. Okay. Just have to be remember about the, what is lintel, why we need a lintel, what is about purpose, what is about perform. You have to be memorized about the, this meaning. Okay. Now we need to discuss about the waterproofing. So we little bit the cover the waterproofing issue from the last semester. But today I just need to be more to discuss about the how you waterproof your assemblage. I think that is very important topic to understand. We keep discussing about the, this waterproofing method through the semester and the, through the site sequences. This is the first time to talk about how you understanding about the waterproofing design from the urbanian wall so please follow the step by step to understanding about the what is waterproofing what is about the method of it so first we need to talk about the load bearing wall system you remember you can just find out the load bearing wall in a classic building 
But nowadays, we are hard to find out the load bearing wall because it requires the huge thickness and huge weight and a huge material. So means nowadays in modern and contemporary architecture have to be more considering about efficiency. So that's why load bearing wall is not very used for our the architecture industry for now. But when you consider about the monolithic wall, I mean the road bearing wall section, it is enough thickness to protect water penetration from the outside to the inside. In the road bearing wall, the brick can be creating as well as the water barrier. So most water can stop over the surface. Even water can penetrate into the, this the wall. The most water absorbed into the, this thickness because it is road bearing wall, it have to be pretty thick wall to support to the weight, the from the this reason, this monolithic, the, mo the road bearing wall, the works as the water barrier. But once again, but this is not very typical, the wall system for contemporary architecture. So that's why we have to be more to discuss about the Benio wall system. The Benio wall system more compact and efficient way. Though you have a two layer here, so which is a structural layer and then the brick as the decoration. This is just single layer for decorating your elevation. Okay, so just remember about the Benio wall system. Actually, it has the separate structure system, but brick banner is just works as the the building envelope and building skin. So just kind of let's see the some example. Remember about the project here. Uh, this uh, Drexel University Jewish Art Jewish Music uh, Jewish Center. Um, the we using the these the Stanley State is working on the this project. Um, which we the that time we using the this brick system, and then we using the these uh, the modular brick system to the provide the volumetric form over the flat surface. Usually the university required to use the brick because the the university campus, they most most their building is made by the brick. So that's why you have to use the brick. But also how we actually make the symbolize this brick material the different way. So from the this region, we more to consider about the the expose the header and then having the undulating stacking method to provide more volumetric the elevation through the different brick stacking. So it is available to make you know, this undulating elevation because we use the some brick banner system. I think you better to understand about the actual assemblage from the next detail section. So now it's very important to know about the, this assemblage here. So first, you have to be know about the, where is the structure part. This is what we use the matter stud. This layer, okay. This is a matter stud, okay, and then. To cover the matter stud because when you expose matter stud, it's not great for the interior. So that's why we have to be add gypsum board here. So after gypsum board, you usually the several the paint coating over it. So that's why it is called as the gypsum board and with this interior wall. And then this is the matter stud. And then to cover the this structure system, this framing system, we have to be add sheeting. Okay. This is we can call the tieback fiberglass mesh sheeting. It's mostly using for the exterior because the the mesh sheeting also having the waterproofing itself, but it's not great, but it's much better than gypsum board. So that's why when you're using the outside, you have to be using the matte sheeting, okay, fiberglass mesh sheeting. So this is a we can also call it cover board, okay. The cover board means over the structure framing. So this is a need a cover board to protect this structure. And over the cover board, we need a waterproofing here. So this is a waterproofing membrane. So even you just remember about the banner system is thin. So that's why the most water still protect mostly from the surface, but lots of water can be penetrating into the, your the assemblage. That's why you have to be protect these the the water from the exterior so that's why over the cover board you need a waterproofing membrane here this is a waterproofing line and then now we add exterior and interior rigid insulation 
So usually we need the uh, insulation inside, but also nowadays we add this insulation outside because when you're getting the, some outside insulation, this is totally separating outer layer and inner layer. So that's why your wall performance is much better when you're having the exterior insulation. Okay, so you're just kind of familiar with this kind of a sequence. I more to discuss about this the assemblage again and again for the today's lecture and then the stone creating lecture. So this semester the, I ask you to the memorize this drawing. Okay? I think it's easy to memorize this drawing. You keep drawing over and over when you're having the time. So you can just keep drawing the this drawing over and over. You probably familiar with this creating system very well. So I just ask you to the memorize this one and ask you to draw the this exact drawing in your final and your the module keys. Okay. So this brick banner system we can also call it the rain screen system. A lane screen system is kind of more system to provide cavity space. So you can just kind of find out this cavity space, the brick banner, and then the cover board and insulation. They have some air space here. So when you just provide air space, we can call it the lane screen system, which is I can just slide down here, lane screen system which is having the cavity space which is a cavity space means air space here okay so why we have to be provide the cavity space because when you're in the cavity space usually water coming into the, your assemblage the water can dry it out very easily when you're in the air space but when you're creating and cover board stick together the water is very hard to dry it because when the water coming in, it's hard to escaping from the, your space. That's why when you just consider about the creating system, you better to provide this air space, which is the cavity space, which is the lane screen system, to dry the, out the water efficiently. Okay, so means wider cavity means less chance of the water breaching gap from outside to the inside. Okay. So this is a kind of basic understanding about the creating system here. So you just kind of find out here, the you have a brick banner system here, and then most of the water can protect it from the outer layer, but some of the water can be inside. In this case, you have to be protected this water from the cover board. That's why you have to be add waterproof membrane over the cover board. Okay, so. This is a kind of layer you just understanding. The brick layer, the red one, this is a brick modular brick, which is a brick banner. And then the this one, you can just add the framing, which is structure. And then between, it is the cavity space, which is the we can call the drainage cavity. And it's also called the land screen system when you're having this air space between. And in this cavity space, we have to be have the waterproofing membrane over the cover board and the rigid insulation is optional however highly recommend adding the rigid in insulation outside because you can increase the, the thermal performance when you're having the rigid insulation outside and then to protect the framing you have to be add cover board which is the sheeting and then for the interior wall you have to be adding over the this framing in this case, you can add in the gypsum board over the framing system. Okay, so just understanding about three layer again. The red one is the finished material, which is the finished brick creating material, and the green one is the air space. In air space, you have to be have the waterproof membrane over the cover board, but also highly recommend using the this rigid insulation. And then we having the blue one is the the framing, which is the main structure to support the weight. Then to protect the, this framing system, you have to be adding the, the gypsum board inside and outside the sheeting, which is a cover board. 
Okay, I think see it is pretty easy to understand about some system. However, it is very basic system to draw the word section later, to draw the any kind of creating system later. So that's why this semester you have to be familiar with this creating system very well. Then you have to be memorized this old terminology and this drawing. I just highly ask you to the memorize this one. When you know about this one, you already know about the 70% of the, this, the site tech content. It is very easy to change basically from the, this basic drawing. I think it is one of the most important sketch and drawing to understanding about the brick and brick the, the building envelope system. Okay. So also think about when you're having the, some concrete wall and then this is a, the creating system. It can be the wood framing or metal framing anyway. The same thing. So you have a concrete curve and then concrete wall. It is highly recommended using the rigid insulation. Still, you have to be provide the cavity and air space. But you have to be remember the cavity space have to be more than two inches. The I think it is available less than two inches. But performance, when you consider about the performance, it is highly recommend using the more than two inch cavity space between the finish wall, which is the brick veneer, and the cover board. Okay. Also, also we talk about wider cavity allow more for the material tolerance. It means. It's so much easier to dry out the water when water penetrating through the the crating. Okay. So also we talk about the cavity. Two inches is minimum cavity for the block, but also you have to be know about the maximum distance. You have to be making out the four and a half inch maximum cavity space between the brick veneer and cover board. And then I just ask you to recommend to adding the rigid insulation here. So we talk about the insulation later of the this the module, but continuous XPS, which is the rigid insulation, which is a blue foam or pink foam, can be dramatically improve the thermal performance of the wall system because it is separating outer layer and inner layer, and then it protects the bridging, the thermal bridging from outside to the inside. I think you just talk we keep talking about this issue and then I think you better understanding about this outside rigid insulation concept better. better. And also when you have in the rigid insulation outside, it is also reduce the risk of a condensation on steel stud because what is about condensation? If you have a two different temperature outside inside, the always air the moving from higher temperature to lower temperature. So it means air always contain the water. This water making on the condensation. It means when different temperatures are meeting together on the surface, it's making out the water. This kind of we can call the moisture. This moisture impacts your structure system. But when you're having this rigid insulation outside, so you can just make it more equalized temperature outside and balance the temperature outside and inside. That's why air never the transferring between outside and inside. That's why you can reduce the condensation when you're having the rigid insulation outside. I think that is a little bit difficult to understand, but we talk about this issue later of this module, okay? So once again, so I just kind of give you one more time, what is about the four layers of the defense of the, your water? So first we have to be having a structure frame. It can be concrete, concrete masonry unit, or metal stud, wood stud. You can choose anything else. And then two, if when you choose a metal stud light framing structure, which is a metal stud and wood stud, you have to be protect your framing system. Inside you can use in the gypsum board, and the outside you can use in the cover board. You can cord the sheeting, which is the mesh sheeting. I can just kind of indicating here. Okay, and then the middle side you have to be have the cavity space, and then to protect the cover board. You have to be have the waterproofing membrane, and then to increase the, your the wall performance, highly recommend adding the rigid insulation. Okay, and then you remember about the what is about the minimum cavity space? It is called 
two inch minimum, right? You remember about here? And then four and a half inches maximum, okay? And then you just adding the some creating system. So when you want to change it to some different creating system like metal or terracotta or the stone, you can simply repress the this stone banner system. And then from here to here, 90% always same system you can use. That's why when you know about this drawing, you simply change the creating system. You can adapt some any kind of uh, assemblage, exterior assemblage from the this drawing. Okay. So it's once again over the the cover board. You need a waterproofing membrane, and then between you need a the cavity space and air space to dry out the water, and then the brick banner system as the your the the creating and then finish wall design material. So next one is wall assembly system. So you don't need to too much worry about this. So we need to discuss about how the floor and the wall just meet together. We discuss this one the next semester and 348 and 445. Now just kind of understanding about the concept. This is uh, actually the slab, which is concrete slab here, and then this is a the structure system here, and then you remember about you have to be making the continuous waterproofing membrane here to protect this structure, and then adding the some continuous rigid insulation to provide better performance of your building, and then adding the cavity space, and adding the brick banner design here. Similar as here, I think you can see the truss design, and then the metal decking system and you can see the CMU block here as the structure and then you have to provide the waterproofing membrane and the rigid insulation cavity space is usually 4 inch typical for the this cavity space and then adding the this finish the brick wall design okay so when you're just understanding about the previous the diagram or sketch and detailed drawing it is easy to apply the this assemblage drawing, right? So just kind of memorize the the previous drawing. It is much easy to understanding about the the system very well. So this one is the dark gray part is the structure, and then you can see the the green dashed line. It is the waterproof membrane, and then. The purple one, it is the rigid insulation. It's optional, but when you have one, you can increase the building performance. And then it is the yellow one, is the the cavity space, okay? And then which is the provide air space to dry out the water very well. And then the red one is the finish, the brick material, okay? So now we talk about the corner condition design. So when you design the brick veneer at the corner, it has to consider about the expansion. So the when you know about the brick is stacking the between, it is using the mortar and the mortar contain the water. So it means it can be ex expand or shrink the depending on the season. It means the corner has the big failure such as the vertical cracking when you do not consider about the joint expansion. So it means what is it meaning? So it means when you're having the mortar here between the brick, it's expanding here, and the mortar between expand. So this kind of expansion actually the pushing the this side. It means this corner, this corner, this can be having the vertical the clacking. So that's why. So when you just kind of consider about the tight corner between the horizontal and vertical layer without any gap between, so without any tolerance space between the this horizontal layer and vertical layer, this the expansion of the brick can pushing the this side in maxing out the some failure of the this corner condition. So that's why you can see the more damage here. This movement of the longest panel. So means if you don't have any kind of a, the the tolerance space between the horizontal layer and the vertical layer. This is a keep moving the this side and then this the expansion of the mortar keep 
the pushing the this side of a brick it mean it means it making out the, some cracking the this the corner condition so how we can protect here how actually you can protect this cracking issue it's pretty simple um, when you just kind of provide this horizontal layer and the vertical layer the between the horizontal layer and, and vertical layer you provide tolerance space here which is a gap between the horizontal layer and vertical layer so if you don't have any gap between it's, if you have in the horizontal and the vertical layer is very tight this horizontal or vertical layers keep pushing one side to making out the cracking so but if you have in the gap between the horizontal layer and vertical layer it provides a tolerance space that's why you can actually protect the cracking the the corner the condition here so in this case you're just making out the open space between here and here just making the open space here however when you just get open the this corner condition water is very easy to coming into the your assemblage from the this region you have to be sealed the sealant and back road here and we can call these the tolerance and gap space we can call it as the expansion joint which is the thermal expansion joint okay so it means thermal expansion joint protect the 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 body cracking because about the brick expansion and then also you have to be concerned about the, the lateral process which is the lateral process the horizontal process which is the coming from the earthquake or wind so it means this is a giving the keep horizontal process here it means brick also keep pushing the one side if you don't have any kind of a gap between the, these two layer horizontal layer and vertical layer in maxing out the failure of the, your elevation design that's why you have to provide gap between and you have to be sealed the sealant and back road to protect the water coming coming into the, your assemblage so this part once again you can call thermal expansion joint okay so let's talk about the, this expansion expansion joint one more time you can see that your building construction here I can just read through I think you better to understanding about what is about the expansion joint in in the building construction expansion joint is structure separation designed to relieve stress on the building material caused by the building mo building movement induced by lateral pulses you remember what is lateral pulses like a wind pulse and the earthquake pulse which is a horizontal pulses and thermal expansion and contraction which is a thermal expansion the building can be expand or shrink depending on the weather because about the mortar contained water um, because the joint the bisect the entire structure it marks a gap through the old building assembly so means building between the building you have to make in the gap between and then you have to be sealed sealant and back road to protect the water and then this gap also the provide tolerance space between the two brick okay so that's why when you consider to build and construct the brick assemblage you have to be provide expansion joint the the with the, the certain dimension so that's why when you see that these two building here you can just find out the expansion joint here you can see the this vertical expansion joint and then you can see the this horizontal expansion joint here this expansion joint one more time it protect the thermal expansion and shrink and the lateral process it protect the the brick failure over the elevation okay it provide the extra the tolerance space between the two brick and it protect the brick expansion and shrink and then it protect friction between the t these two bricks to provide this the gap between the bricks okay and the next building you can see also find out the expansion joint you can see the vertical expansion joint here and you can also find out the horizontal expansion joint here okay but once again when you're just making the tolerance space between the two brick okay and then the water is easy to come into the space that's why you have to be provide the sealant and back road to restore the water properly. Okay, 
So this is a we can call it as the expansion joint. Okay, you have to be memorized what is about the expansion expansion joint and why we need the expansion joint. So once again, caused by the building movement and from the lateral process and then thermal expansion and the contraction. It protect the the body cracking because about the the pushing the one brick to the other brick. So it means you have to be understanding about the, this concept. Once again, you just remember about how you actually the protect the water through the this the gap between. So this gap is pretty is pretty big actually. That's why you have to be add. You can see the sealant, and then you can see the back road, and then you can just use the this different material, which is the free molded the foam pad, which is a sponge. It means easy to filling into the gap, and then when just filling in the gap, it's easy to expand. So that's why it protects the water from the outside. And the neoprene pad, which is the rubber pad, is also protect the water from the outside. Okay. So you can just find out the free molded foam here. This is a totally protect the disjoint here. In the neoprene pad, you can also the covering the disjoint to protect the water. And in this condition, you can just use in the sealant and back road like here. And then if you need extra protection, especially when you're designing the high-end project, the we usually adding the double sealant and back road, which is you can add in the double sealant double side and back road double side okay so depending on the some budget and project type sometimes it re only require the one cylinder back road but sometimes it also require the two back road and two the cylinder like this assembly now i just gonna bring the one more video to expand explaining about how expansion joint construct in the site we can watch in this one together and then let's talk about the next topic Explore the power of possibilities with Nichiha. Whatever the look you're after, there's a Nichiha architectural wall panel to help you achieve it. This animated installation video series is a new way for us to share with you our inside story and show you what's possible with our fiber cement system solution. Vertical expansion joints and horizontal compression joints. When walls clad with Nichiha architectural wall panels are 50 feet or longer without corners or offsets, they require vertical expansion joints to be installed every 30 feet to relieve stresses from normal expansion and contraction of the materials. Unless manufactured corners are used, vertical expansion joints are required within 2 to 10 feet from each outside corner, one on each wall. This video demonstrates a typical metal stud wall with dense glass sheathing weather-resistive barrier per local code and has extra framing installed at the planned expansion joint locations. Measure and mark the center line of the planned expansion joint on the weather-resistive barrier. For best results, use our double flange sealant backer at all vertical expansion joints. It provides exact spacing for the joint, provides two-point contact between the sealant and the panels while providing the recommended depth of sealant. Fasten the backer at the center line mark using one screw every 12 to 14 inches on center. Remove the shiplap edge from the right of the panel and seal the exposed edge. Fasten the architectural wall panel to the wall using corrosion resistant screws and panel clips butting the panel against the backer. Install the remaining wall panels using the same procedure. Notice that the stud framing is arranged so sealant backer and panel clips are fastened through the sheathing into studs. For a clean sealant joint, apply tape to the panel edges using a low adhesive tape such as painter's tape. Fill the joint with sealant and remove tape to complete the vertical expansion joint. Part 2. Horizontal Compression Joints For buildings greater than 3 stories or 45 feet, Horizontal compression joints are required. The spacing of these horizontal joints vary according to the construction type. Consult the Nichiha installation guides for more information on spacing requirements. This video demonstrates a typical horizontal compression joint on a metal stud wall assembly. Horizontal joints should be located at floor lines. Remove the ship lapped edge from the top of the panel 
directly beneath the planned compression joint. And be sure to seal the exposed edge after cutting. Install the top course of panels and place a Nichiha shim behind the panel at the top. Fasten using one corrosion resistant screw every 16 inches on center. Install Z-flashing above the last course, leaving a 1 quarter inch gap between the Z-flashing and the top edge of the last course. Use flashing tape to seal the flashing to the weather resistive barrier. Install the starter track an inch and a quarter above the panel below. This will create a half inch clearance between the courses, creating the desired compression joint. Now we talk about the joint type. So we already discussed about the joint type from the last semester, but we just discussed about the form to making out the joint depending on the, the joint tool. But joint is not just for athletic. It is more to for relating to the, some performance. It is the part of the first line of the defense for the water shedding. So means depending on the, this joint type, you can just consider about the different performance of the water protection. So I just kind of having the few different the joint condition here. The first one, we can talk about the B shape and weathered shape. In this case, weathered and B joint are only appropriate for the dry climate. So mean if you have lots of water, so mean water tend to stay in this condition. It means when water stain, it's more easy to water getting into the, your space. Next one, the lake and the flush and stroke. It is joint only appropriate in the interior masonry because you see here, this is a plate. It means water is tend to stay in here and then coming into the space. And also the here, this is a plate surface here. The water is coming in. Same here, when you're having the, this plate surface, water tend to stay and coming into the place. Um, but that concave shape, I think this is the best the joint type to offer to protect the water from the outside. So that's why when you see the outside, the most the joint type using the, this concave form to protect the water very well. So just considering about the, some disjoint tool when you're using the outside, consider about this concave shape, the concave form for the, your joint. If you fail, the water is staying the more tall and then this is, you can see the, the white weathering here. So it means the water and the meaning the more tall and then if it's not protect properly, the, you can just make in a, this white weathering over the brick. So this is a failure of the, your elevation design. That's why you have to be very carefully choosing the, the proper the joint type for your the mortar design between the bricks. Now we talk about the detail part. So you can see the one of a very typical the brick design building here. The blue one, we can just see the expansion joint line here. You can see the expansion joint. And then when you see the actual the detail here. So we already discussed about the three different layer, which is the the structural layer. You can use this building use, using the some concrete, the wall, and then metal stud framing the bottom. And then to protect the metal stud framing, you remember inside you can add in the interior wall, which is a gypsum board. Outside you have to add in the sheeting, which is a cover board. And then to protect the this outer layer, you have to be add waterproof membrane outside. And then to the making the better the perform the building, you have to be in the rigid insulation outside. And then between space, you have to provide the cavity space. And then over the cavity space, you can just add in the finished material. But now we have to be seeing how you can design the expansion joint. We can just zoom in the this part and see how you detailed out this expansion joint part. Okay, so you can see. So when you just kind of think about the expansion joint, you have to be have the, the bigger gap between the brick and then to protect the water, you have to bend in the expansion joint and back a road. And then also we mostly adding the, this angled the plate to support the, the, the brick weight over it. So that's why this is a kind of a main 
kind of a structure point to hold in the brick over the structure system. And then we're just adding the these the the pen flashing, which is the flashing is made by aluminum, which is a continuous plate, which is the it is kind of protect the water condition. I think we can zoom in and see the this condition again. Okay, we can zoom in to this part. I think you better understanding about the disjoint system here. I think that is not very easy to understand for right now. But we talk about the this expansion joint one more time. However, you just kind of understanding about the this system. Um, first, you can just see the structural wall system here, and then you can just find out the expansion joint here. Okay, so expansion joint to protect the water through the expansion joint, you have to add silicon and road in this location. And then once again, to support the brick weight over the this expansion joint, you have to be have this angled plate. This angled plate have to be anchoring into the, the structure wall. Okay, this is a main structure point to hold the brick wall over the expansion joint. But now we have to be discussed about the waterproofing. You remember about over the structure, you have to be have a waterproofing membrane, okay? But when you having the this structure system, we always having the gap between the this condition and this condition. You can just kind of zoom in a little bit. You can just see the the expansion joint between because this kind of having the structure system and the wall usually having the gap, even very small gap. Water is easy to penetrate into the space. From the this region, you have to be have extra waterproofing system. So I can just erase everything here. Be better to see the system. So first, you can just find out the this the gap between. So first, we have to welding very well to protect the water. You can just see the yellow line is uh, the waterproofing membrane. So, but when you're just having the gap between, and when you find the joint between the the metal plate and the structure, you always have to be provided double protection system, which is the, when you're having a joint, we always have to be provided to the waterproofing layer. The first layer, you can see waterproofing membrane over it, and then the pen flashing design here, okay, this pen flashing design, the having the second layer to protect the water coming into the place. So means you have to be adding the pen flashing, which is the aluminum plate to cover the this joint, and then it's coming out to the expansion joint and then to protect the this condition again you can see find out here so you can see the fan flashing even they're having the very small gap to protect this gap you have to be adding the this waterproofing membrane overwrapping over the this gap condition okay so just kind of understanding about the the design system here to making out the expansion joint you remember the why we need the expansion joint because about the lateral pulses and thermal expansion and the the shrink so that's why you have to provide the expansion joint to protect the vertical crack so that's why you have to provide this the expansion joint but to protect the water into the this the bigger gap so that's why we have to add in the cylinder and back road and then to support the brick weight over the expansion joint you need this angled plate but this angled plate the supported by the this structure wall and then you have to be anchoring into the this structure wall here and then you have to be protected the water condition because about the this plate and structure having the gap between that's why you have to be in the this the green dashed line which is the pen flashing which is a continuous metal plate and the metal plate also having the gap between here because about the metal pressing and the concrete usually having the gap between so that's why to protect this corner condition, you have to be in the waterproof membrane overwrapping over the, this condition. So just kind of a, this is a typical the assemblage technique to protect the water when you're having the expansion joint. Okay. I think you better to understanding about the, this diagram here. You can see the concrete wall and then this is the expansion joint. You remember about the angled plate. This angled plate the support to the brick weight and then this anchor an angle the plate anchoring into the, this structure you can see the anchoring into the structure and then this angle to protect the water coming from the outside through the expansion joint you need a back road and expansion joint here 
and you can also find out the fan flashing design here you can have to be protect the these the joint condition that's why you have to be add this fan flashing which is a fan flashing has continuous the metal plate here you can see that this is a fan flashing and then you have to find out the fan flashing over here this is also having the joint between that's why to protect the, this joint condition you have to be add the waterproofing membrane over it so it means you can just find the waterproofing membrane to cover the this joint condition so it means you can just find the fan flashing to protect the this the joint and another waterproofing membrane over the this fan flashing to protect the, this condition okay so this one is understanding about how you protect the water the properly but if you don't have waterproofing but if you don't have any fan flashing either so it has the big problem the water coming into the, your space so that's why you always, you always following the these the logic to provide water protection from the outside now we talk about the wall tie what is about the wall tie you can just kind of find out the wall tie from the this the diagram this is a wall tie the wall tie the main structure point of the your brick wall assembly you can use in the angled plate but also you have to be adding the, this wall tie this wall tie securely attached between the brick veneer and structure wall so simply you can use the different types of the wall tie there were lots of a different wall tie so you can just see that this wall tie anchoring into the structure and then adding the, this the horizontal bar to holding the, your the brick tightly from the, your structure you can also find out that these the two-dimensional the wall tie also this is another word tie over the CMU block so you can also have in the same function as well so let's talk about uh, some corner condition here so we already discussed and then this is a structure wall and then you remember about the two protect the structure wall you have to be in the waterproof membrane and the rigid insulation outside to making the better perform the building and in between you need to be adding the air space which is the cavity space and outside you can adding the the brick wall here but to making out the brick wall you remember we have to be provide expansion joint at the corner condition because the brick keep pushing the this side the from the lateral forces which is the the wind or earthquake or expansion the thermal expansion depending on the weather so from the this region you have to provide tolerance space and then to making the tolerance space usually making the bigger gap the two protect the gap you have to be adding the silicon tempeco road it is called as the expansion joint and also you can just find out the the wall tie system to the connect your brick system tightly through the your structure wall design okay so we already talk about this old system and you also talk about the the wall tie system here okay so now we talk about the whip hole. What is about the whip hole? When you just kind of passing to passing through the your brick wall design, you can just usually find out that this small tube over the the mortar. What is about the this the system? The whip hole. This is a more opening that allow the water to drain from the within the assembly. You remember about the, you have a cavity space here and the water coming in. The water have to be dried out and then water also coming down because of the gravity and the water coming in and then if you don't have any whip for water storing the this space and then it keep impact to your space that's why you have to be making out the, some pipe to getting out the water from the your the cavity space so from the, this region you have to provide the wall pass and then the when you make the wall pass we usually having the these the a whip hole using the tube or the these the metal the whip hole metal water pass the why we need a, this the plastic whip hole or tube whip hole or the metal whip hole we just kind of make an opening right but why we need this one because without the, this one the your friend is coming in the like a mouse or the snake actually can getting into the, your assembly G. so from the, this region you have to protect the, your the friend which is the mouse and snake from the outside 
and then therefore you have to provide this V4 this is a water pass from the inside also protect the, the mouse or snake the, from the outside the, our last topic we talk about the uh, building opening okay so I think we this is the most difficult and challenging detail so it means you don't need to be the remember and the memorizing about the, this building opening detail assemblage because we talk about the, this opening detail the later which is the we talk about the, some this building opening 348 and 445. I think you're just kind of learning about uh, this system more deeply so when you are in the third year and fourth year okay now you're just understanding about the concept so when you're just designing over the brick banner detail at the opening window or door you have to very carefully design when you design the detail at the opening because about the water penetration the this is a very easy to getting into the water when you fail to design in uh, this detail so from the, this design, you have to be very carefully designing about the, this assemblage and the joint. So first one, you remember about the... I can just erase one more time. So what is about the, this the part, this angled plate, you remember? So over the opening, we have to provide the lintel, right? The lintel is always have to be locating over the opening to protect the, your the brick banner design so metal plate here this is a lintel to support the the brick road over the opening okay this is a lintel and also same thing here you can just find out the cover board here and then we have in the waterproofing membrane and then when you having the joint system here this is similar as the previous the detail you have to be adding the pen flashing to protect the, this lintel joint and then to protect the the pen flashing joint you have to be add the, the waterproofing membrane here i think so i think you already know how you can actually the layering the waterproofing and fan flashing and the the this lintel or angled plate okay i think you already know about this system just kind of following the this logic to understanding to protect the water and to support the brick load okay so I think that is about the today's topic here I think you just kind of following this I think you better to understanding what is going on here so I just kind of explaining one more time here so you can just kind of find out the opening the over the opening we always have to have the lintel here this is a lintel and then the lintel when you have the lintel you can support the brick but you have to be protected the disjoint condition. In this case, we have to be adding the pen flashing here. This pen flashing is continuous aluminum, understand, uh, this continuous metal plate. In this case, you have to be the protect this joint condition. And then you have to be also protect this joint condition through the, the, this waterproof membrane. That's why to protect the, this corner condition, you have to be add the pen flashing and to protect in this condition, you have to be in the waterproof membrane. Okay, so this is the same logic to understanding about uh, this the layering system to protect the water. Okay, I think I upload the the first the lab on the canvas. I think you can just find out uh, some lab assignment and then just making out your team to working on the, your lab assignment. So thanks for the your the first class. And then the this Thursday we talk about accessibility okay thank you guys